सर आई स्टैंड हियर टू वेलकम द बिल विच सपोज टू रिप्लेस द ऑर्डिनेंस बट एज अगेन अनफॉर्चुनेटली आई टू से दैट एन ऑर्डिनेंस हैड टू बी इश्यूड टू इंट्रोड्यूस अ टॉपिक लाइक दिस विच वॉज रियली नेसेसरी टू बी ब्रॉट इन इन अ फॉर्म ऑफ अ लॉ सर वी आर रियली हर्ड for a long time since yesterday the debate on this subject and i was really wondering whether really we are introducing a bill for a judicial review commission we have really gone into the depth and found out the various facets of judiciary including the conduct and the performance of some of the judges while discharging their duties i don't think there is any provision in the constitution which enables anybody to really have a review of this nature and probably that's why the members thought that a parliament is a forum to air such grievances i am really wondering whether a this type of approach will help the judiciary to strengthen in the long term sir we have as everybody has said we have very three important pillars on which our constitution our state really rest our state rest on executive the judiciary and the legislature the executive is accountable to legislature the responsibility of the judiciary starts the moment legislature finishes its task of making laws the interpretation of laws and interpretation of executive actions is something which comes under the judicial review many a times sir we are really found many critics about the functioning of the judiciary as has been aired in this very house so we must really look at it that we as parliamentarians and a parliament as a sovereign body we call it sovereign because we are all accountable to people and people feel that we they derive we derive our power from the people so the judiciary which is so heavily criticized now by some members here has been really the source of the people at people at large are really feeling that the judiciary is the last resort and the rights could be protected only by the judiciary so the quasi judicial functions which are performed by the election commission we have an instance where in one election commission the election commissioner people feel that he is the sole guardian of their interest one person has become so popular despite the fact that there has been so much of allegation so much of mal mal functioning is alleged to have been committed by certain functionaries but despite that the election commissioner is somebody who is worshiped as a hero by people at large so when we parliamentarians are accountable to people and people themselves feel that the judiciary is the only institution which they feel can protect the rights we should always remember that we being accountable to people we should also respect the right of these people the will of the people yes. sir i would like to say that we should not forget one important thing that the people in our country they have elected us because we are following democratic setup in the country one of the fundamental principles of democracy which is enshrined in our constitution is the fundamental rights which are enjoyed by all the people of india sir these fundamental rights had there been there these fundamental rights were introduced in the constitution but there was no measure by which these rights could have been exercised probably the rights had no meaning there are several countries in the world who have given so many rights to the constitution but in the absence of proper judicial structure these rights cannot be exercised and the democracy has become mockery in those country so sir what is really important is that we should not and we never should forget that the judiciary is something which is really necessary for good functioning of democracy from which we derive our all powers so parliament the executive and the judiciary have got a roles to perform sir these various judgments which have been really mentioned here and which have been very heavily criticized all the judgments have passed not against parliament or parliamentarians but against the executive we should not forget that fact that all the judgments have been either against the people who have been occupying public offices have been the subject matter of discussion in this house and the parliament as such as an institution or the members of parliament as the people's representative have not been really coming into the public into judicial scrutiny as has been alleged by some members here so sir i feel that we should really have a look and we should not forget we should not overlook the fact that the judiciary has a role to perform 
for smooth functioning of the democracy. However, I am real. I am aware of the fact that right now I am not standing here to decide about the fate of what should be the constitutional framework in which judiciary, the parliament, and the executive should function because that is what is already stated in the in the in the constitution. But right now I am standing here to just to intervene on this very limited point of this amendment which is thought to be brought in. Sir, this could be described as too little and too late. Sir, we should always remember that constitution always thought that a judge must be able to function independent of executive's interference. And that was the reason why the service conditions were stipulated in the constitution itself. That protection has been given to the judiciary, the judges, that though their rights, their privileges, their emoluments should be determined by the constitution so that nobody can tamper with it. So those rights, those, uh, those privileges that they enjoy should undergo change from time to time. So thanks to the new economic policy, there has been a wealth which has been created in the hands of millions of people in India. So the same judiciary is now supposed to be trying people who have committed economic offenses which run into thousands of crores of rupees. So the same judiciary cannot be expected to perform and deliver and diligently work getting the same service conditions which are prevailing about 30, 35 years ago. So that's why I feel, sir, there is a really a crying need to give proper benefits, proper emoluments to the members of the judiciary, the judges, and so that they could discharge their responsibilities and could protect the constitution without any interference and fear or favor. Sir, we must have the highest regards for judiciary. There is already a provision in the constitution which allows for impeachment. I know that impeachment is a process which is very difficult to practice in the present form. So there could be a possibility of reviewing that process, but there is no point criticizing the judiciary lock, stock and barrel because of certain misdeeds could have been committed by some members of the judiciary in some parts of the country. Sir, I would request the Honorable Law Minister to also look at a possibility whereby there is a possibility that these service conditions could be increased, that there is a quantum increase in the amount of emoluments that they receive with the passage of time, and we really don't have to wait for 10 years or 12 years to introduce one single change, which is overdue. That's why I said it is too little but too late. Sir, we should also remember one thing, that there is the objects, objects for which the bill has been introduced, it is stated that the increase in petrol prices has necessitated this amendment. So this, this particular object is dated 21st of June, and on 3rd of July, we have introduced a hefty price rise of 30%. I would like to know from the Honorable, Finance, uh, Honorable Law Minister whether he is also proposing an amendment to this so that the emoluments could be increased by 30% more. If not, I know because he already they introduced the amendment which takes a quantum, the amount is not stated in rupees, but it is stated in quantum of petrol. But if this is what it is, then there was no need to state in the objects that increase in petrol prices has necessitated this amendment because this is a quantum increase in the consumption of petrol itself. Sir, I would also like to draw the attention of the Honorable Law Minister to a very important point which has also been reiterated by some of my Honorable Members earlier. Sir, the judiciary is not just High Court judges and the Supreme Court judges. The common man hardly reaches this stage to get his grievances redressed. The justice is really given to him at a very lower level of district courts and even lower to that. So the service conditions of these district courts needs to be really improved. I am aware of a fact that a Sindhudurga district and Ratnagiri district in Konkan, the district courts there and the judiciary, I know, but district courts there, they are not even having an accommodation. So probably some constitutional measure which will ensure an independence of functioning of judiciary would also be called for. Sir, I would request the Honorable Minister also to consider where, as I said earlier, there could be an enabling provision which allows the judiciary to get their allowances increased with the passage of time due to increasing cost of living and not to wait for the executive to react because probably then there could be unfortunate situation in which executive would say that you are passing too many judgments against us. So we would not like to pass a judgment, right? Because you are passing judgments on us, we will not like to pass judgment on your demand at this stage. So probably let the executives perform the role of executives and judgments to be passed only by the judiciary. I would welcome this amendment and I would request the Honorable Law Minister to reply to the certain intervention that we mentioned. Thank you, sir.